Now then, today Boris Johnson and Jeremy Hunt uh, both rejected any Brexit deal containing the Irish backstop. Ireland's finance minister, though, was quick to condemn their decision, saying Ireland would not accept any changes to the backstop, which is contained within the withdrawal agreement. Well, joining me now from Dublin is Mick Fealty, uh, founding editor of the blog Slugger O'Toole. Good to talk to you, Mick Fealty. So, uh, whoever becomes Prime Minister in the United Kingdom now wants to get rid of the backstop in its entirety, or certainly alter it uh, so fundamentally. What, what are they making of that in Dublin? Well, from the consultations that I've had with people in Dublin politics, I have to say it's weary. Uh, people are really not surprised anymore at anything that Boris Johnson says. And I don't think there's any doubt in anyone's mind in Dublin that Boris is the one who's initiated this strange outbidding process of his, uh, as he tries to shake off his, his, his rival. Um, but nor am I picking up that anyone is particularly inclined to believe a single word that he actually says. It doesn't mean to say that he's not perceived as a threat. Certainly the papers in the last week in Dublin have been uh, certainly taking a no deal uh, scenario much more seriously than they had been heretofore. Uh, they clearly see uh, Johnson as something of a kind of a loose cannon, uh, but also he's building up a whole series of structural problems for himself in believing that um, in pressurizing Irish politicians that somehow he can get a change to a backstop mechanism that was put in to facilitate Mrs May and Britain's own uh, demands both to have access to the single market and to be able to conduct its own trade deals. The insecurity of, of the border in Ireland being one of the central uh, objects of that backstop. So tell me, though, um, is it causing, I mean, you mentioned the prospect of, of no deal um, and, and clearly the hit on the Irish economy. Well, what's it, four billion euro? The estimate, of course, is there. Is it causing any, any tensions within Irish politics between the government, the opposition and those that support the government? No, strangely, they're absolutely, it's not strange, actually, because when you consider that all elected um, politicians in Doyle Air, and that's the National Parliament in Dublin, are bound by a written constitution. And that written constitution uh, is constructed of a whole series of articles laid down in the original constitution from the 1930s. But also since about 1986, every time Ireland has, ha has had to sign a, a European treaty, it has had to put that treaty uh, in front of the Irish people via a national referendum. And then that's been co-opted into constitutional law constitutional law which is jealously guarded by its own Supreme Court. So every politician in, in Doyle Aaron, certainly in the three mainstream parties, that's Fianna, uh, Fianna Gael, the government party, uh, Fianna Fáil, uh, the lead opposition party, and um, Sinn Féin, Mary Lou Macdonald's party, uh, they all understand that the, the country is committed uh, to all of these treaties and it's simply not within its own gift. Uh, just simply to do a side deal with Boris Johnson and get this thing shuffled off uh, and, in, 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 you know, into the sidelines. OK, and uh, what about then an extension? Presumably that is, however however it comes to that point, that is something that, that Dublin would support and recommend indeed. I, I look, I think if we're, if we're being practical here, if we're laying aside all the rhetoric of the Conservative leadership, even in the most optimistic circumstance, we only have about 14 days after he assumes office of prime minister, he being either Boris or uh, Mr. Hunt. Um, so I think it's practically accepted that that's simply not enough time to, to, to you know, uh, dot all the I's and cross all the T's, just simply from a practical point of view. So I think an extension is a no-brainer from the EU side. It's really whether Mr Johnson can climb down from some of the heights that he's managed to get himself up onto just to become leader of the okay. Conservative Party. Mick Fealty, great talking to you. Thank you very much indeed.